Hi, this is Mahesh Ravi and in this tutorial, we'll be trying to create this sequence. So here we are in uh, Cinema 4D and we'll be using Cinema 4D to create this particular sequence and uh, so let's get started. So we'll be making the dice first and to make the dice, we'll start with the cube. So let's go to the um, icon palette and then click to select cube. So we have a cube right here. Just move it um, to the axis like this. All right. So we have uh, the cube right here. So on your right side, you can see the segments that the cube need to have. We definitely need more segments for um, the dice to work. So what we're going to do is we need to find out how many segments this already has. So let's go to display and turn on Gorad shading lines. So we can see that the number of segments are very less, as you can see here. So what we're going to do is we'll increase this to a bigger number. So I'm going to make it seven on all sides, right? So we have a segment like that. So once we select the cube in here, we need to add a fillet so that the edges will be a slightly more smoother uh, than what this. Uh, so let's click the fillet and you can see that it's, it's now a rounded cube. But this is slightly too much. We don't want the radius to be this size. So we'll just reduce it to, let's say, 20 or even let's say 30. We'll keep it 30. And this is decent enough, right? So we have a uh, dice and our dice is looking pretty nicely. So what our next step is to, to create the marks in here. But before that, we need to see um, how a dice is structured. So the dice is going to have numbers up to six on every side of it. So we need to mark those polygons first. So to do that, we are going into the edit mode and we will select the polygon, right? And we're going to choose the polygons that we need. So let's say if we want um, one to be on this side, I'm going to select this. And you have to remember to press shift to select multiple polygons. So in here, if I'm going to make two, I'm going to do it like this. So we have two in here. I'm going to just move and uh, let's say in here we will create a three. So one, two, and uh, let's say three, okay? Have it, and uh, in here we will create a four. So one, two, three, four. So we have it. And uh, we need to have five and six. We'll come here and we will create five and six. So one, two, three, four. And uh, the fifth one. And on the bottom, we need to have a selection of six polygons so one two and three one two and three so now we have polygons selected this is where we will be um, creating the marks on the dice so once we have done this we need to set the selection so setting the selection is pretty easy we just have to go to select tool and click on set selection and you can immediately see that a new icon has appeared right next to the cube so this is something like saving your selection now if you go back to the normal mode you can always click this and get the selection back so we just saved the selection here this is going to be useful later so let's get back into this we are going to create the dice marks in here and i want this to be in shapes of holes spherical holes uh, for the dice to do this, we need to actually define the shape first. So I'm going to go here and create a sphere. So this is the shape of our uh, holes. So we have we are defining the shape of our hole. So this is a segment. We can increase the segments of this a little bit, right? And we can also reduce the size so that it matches, you know, the hole size that we want. And this is good enough, right? We have it. We have to create clones of the spheres. So to do that, um, MoGraph will select a cloner and we will drag the sphere into the cloner. Right now we cannot see the cloners because the cloner is actually in the same position as the um, cube. Now we can see this better, right? So three cloners right now. And this is now having a linear distribution. What we want is we want this spheres to be distributed on the cube object. To do that, we change the mode to object and drag our cube object into the object window here. So right now, the spheres are distributed on the cube surface, but 
here is something that we want to do. We want this to be distributed on the polygons of this cube. To do that, we just come down and we can see distribution, change the surface to polygon center. Now we can see that the sphere is cloned to every single polygon uh, what that is available on the cube. Here also, what we need to see is that, if you remember the previous selection that we have made for the polygons, we need to say that the spheres needs to be cloned only on those selected polygons. So to do that, if you come down, you can see a selection. If you go to the cube, you can see the icon of set selection that we have made earlier. Just drag and drop it into this selection. Now we can see that the spheres are distributed um, based on the initial selection that we have made. And this is looking pretty good. Now what we need to say is that we need to subtract the spheres from this cube to create the uh, dent that we want on the dice. So for that we are going to use another operator. This is called boolean. So let's go here and select the boolean operator. So just bring that in. Now what we need to do is we need to bring in the cloner inside the boolean. We will bring the cube also into the boolean. It already created holes on our dice right and this is exactly what we wanted right so we now have our dice so now what we're going to try and do is um, we'll duplicate this dice before we actually work on our um, simulation so i'm just going to duplicate this so you can control c and control v to create a duplicate just move it slightly uh, like this let's create a different orientation okay, so looks slightly different right now so we have two dices here right what I'm going to do right now is to create a floor so if you click on this it will create a floor right and let's take the two dices and move it in the y-axis like this now what we are going to do is we're going to create a small animation using simulation here so to do that I'm going to select the boolean, two boolean, right, and right click on this, choose simulation tag and say that this is a rigid body. So we have done that. Now if you play back, this is going to happen. It's going to go down and keep going down like this. But again, this is not what we want. We want this to actually come down and hit on this, right, and bounce, right. So we want the floor to be a collider body. So to do that, select the floor, right click, go to simulation tag and choose collider body. Now if you play back the simulation once again, this is going to happen. It's creating a pretty interesting simulation. So select the first boolean and then rotate it a little bit. This, like this. And if I play it back, it's creating an interesting simulation with the dices. And this is exactly what we require. Okay, looking good. So now we have our animation set and uh, we have our dices as well. We will go into uh, lighting and giving, assigning some materials to this object so let's start with lighting the scene so right now if you go to render it it's going to give you a pretty uh, basic render because there are no materials there are no shadows there are no lights so we're going to create a lighting system so to do that we are going to uh, use an hdr map hdri haven is a website which lets you download a lot of hdri high dynamic range imagery to use as a light source for your 3d scenes so you can go to any scene that you require you can download that scene so if I want to download this one, I can just download the HDRI map and I can take the HDRI map and drag it to the material uh, slot. So it will be created as a material. Now we need a sky to assign this to. So to create a sky, you can just come here, click on a sky and a sky will be created in your scene. So all you have to do right now is to drag this material into the sky and you can see that the sky is now using the HDRI map that we just downloaded from the website. Now what we need to do is 
we need to tweak the render settings a bit so that um, the scene is using the light coming from this image. To do that, we'll go to render settings. We'll change the renderer from standard to physical because it's a slightly more accurate renderer. We will use that physical renderer. And uh, we will add an effect called global illumination. So global illumination is something which lets um, the objects in your scene bounce off realistic lights. This is very important when you're using a HDRI sky map, right? So once we have done that, let's quickly render this and see how the output is going to look like. It's starting to look really good, but the uh, realistic shadows and the scene is bright enough and you can see everything clearly. This is looking really cool. Right, so we were using that. Our lighting setup is almost done. Now we need to add some materials into the scene. So let's go a little closer uh, so that we can define the materials which is required in here. So to do that, I'm gonna go to create and create a new material and let's open that up. So we're gonna tweak a couple of settings here. We are going to add this material into our cube. So make sure that you open the boule group and add uh, the material that we just created into the um, cubes in the scene. So now both of the cubes are going to have this uh, color like this. And now we are going to tweak some adjustments in here. I'm going to go to reflectance and you can see by default there is a default map. I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to click to add a reflection legacy map, right? So we just added this. And now you can see that this is very metallic. It's reflecting everything in the scene. And this is not what we exactly want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the um, attenuation in here to additive. So we can see the white right uh, in here. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this texture in here and I'm going to change this to Fresno. So this is giving a right uh, you know, kind of reflection in here. So it is looking pretty good in the scene. And uh, let's see how that is looking right now. Let's click, take a quick render and see how the cube is looking right now. Pretty interesting, good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some materials for the um, spheres, the holes. So to do that, we can duplicate this material. So we can just press control and uh, drag this to create a duplicate and we can change the color so i'm going to just go to color and change it to a black so it's going to change it to a black and then add it to the cloners in your boule so you can see that this is affecting that i can also go in here maybe reduce the reflectivity of that a bit so we can reduce the reflectivity of those materials a little bit and um, we have a pretty good texture to work with what I'm going to do is that I want some sort of um, texture to be applied on the floor. So I'm going to duplicate this material once again. So control and drag it. So it creates another material. Just go in here. I'm going to just play around with the color a little bit. I'm going to make it a slightly uh, you know, orange uh, color, not pure white. I'm going to make it a slight bit of dark. Now in reflectance, I don't want the material to be exactly as reflective as uh, the dice is. So what we can do is we can increase the roughness of this texture. So if you notice here, when we increase the roughness, you can see the reflection is getting slightly off and the texture, the surface is becoming a little more rough. We can see that texture in here. So I'm going to add it to the floor. So now we have the material set. Let's take a quick render and see how our scene has shaped up. Now this is your render right now and it looks pretty good, right? We can see that the dice is a smooth material and it's very reflective. We can see uh, the other dice through it. You can also see uh, the HDRI map being reflected on the dice. But at the same time, the surface is slightly more rough. It is less reflective, but you can still see uh, some definition of the cubes in here. So this is going to look pretty good. And once you're happy with the look, we can go into rendering the sequence. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, in the output panel, you can define your duration. So I'm going to take zero frames to 45 frames to make sure that it's rendering the whole animation sequence. 
and this is fine you can also in your out save you can define the mode that you want to save it so i'm going to save it uh, say a video file and i can mention the formats that i want to save it in i can save it as a an image sequence or i can save it as an, a movie file right so i can do it here so once you've done that you can click on this uh, render to picture viewer and the rendering will start immediately so that's basically it and this is a resultant uh, video file i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and it was easy to follow try it out and it's a very very neat technique um, you will be able to adapt this to a lot of different applications so um, if you like this video subscribe to watch more videos like this and i will see you soon with a new video thank you bye